Hey everyone, welcome to Teslanomics Live. I'm Ben Sullins and I'm pretty pumped today because there is a lot to talk about after Elon's tweets last night. Um, if you stayed up late like some of us did on the West Coast waiting to see what the Model 3 news would be, uh, then you were in luck because he had some really, um, I find, big news about the Model 3. And um, the way this show works is I'm going to go through a few items. Typically, I have stuff all over the spectrum. Today, it's basically all Model 3. This is what Elon tweeted last night. And then I've updated some of the things I've produced related to the Model 3. Um, and then I'll just get right into your questions. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact, these are streamed live on Mondays at 12 Pacific over lunchtime for a lot of us here on the West Coast. And it's just a fun way to recap what's going on with Tesla over the past week and um, and share some thoughts and have a discussion. So uh, at times, it may be a little bit longer than some of my other videos. Videos, know that on Thursdays is when you get my regular scheduled analysis videos, uh, which are much deeper dives and much more produced. Uh, these are a little bit uh, more free flowing, and it's fun because I like to have this kind of real conversation with you uh, instead of the scripted and kind of produced videos that that you're used to seeing from me. So, uh, thanks to all of you uh, for joining me. And if you have questions throughout, um, please hold until the end, and then I'll go into the live Q and A from the chat. Um, I I do have about 10 or 11 questions uh, or, and growing that I've received in advance from uh, my email list subscribers. So if you want to be one of those folks that gets your question in in advance, um, you can uh, go to teslanomics.co and sign up for the email list, or you can find us on Patreon um, and, and subscribe there and then uh, submit your questions in advance and I'll make sure to get to those. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Um, I hope you guys uh, you know, are aware of this. I actually had some questions from folks that said they, they weren't aware of the news. So here you go. Uh, first and foremost, um, also, by the way, I've adjusted my audio settings here. So hopefully things are a bit more in sync. Um, if they're not, I apologize. Uh, I am, you know, this is a, a process uh, and live streaming is not as easy as it may sound. So anyways, um, I'm trying, trying to improve things for you here. But first and foremost, Elon tweeted last night at 1048 p.m. So literally almost uh, running out of the day. Uh, that the Model 3 has passed all regulatory requirements for production two weeks ahead of schedule. Expecting to complete SN1, which is serial number one, which is the first Model 3 on Friday. So congratulations, Tesla. Um, unfortunately, your stock is taking a beating right now, but I'll get into why I think that is in a second. Um, what this means is that everything, all the inspections and everything in order for them to actually make the cars um, is, is done and they're ready to go. A big, the reason this is so big is because they had skipped a big step in testing these things, uh, testing the equipment and the dyes and the stamps and all those things in advance of, uh, I'm sorry, they, they skipped that step just to go straight to the production line. And that's where a lot of people, myself included, were really worried for them because that could be a big risk. If they hit a snag there, then they could have major issues down the road um, that would really, really delay uh, the rest of the rollout of the Model 3. And there is a lot riding on this for Tesla. So uh, congrats to them. That's amazing. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. I can't wait to actually uh, get mine and see one in person. So the next part, the next tweet was that the party, the handover party, he's calling it. Well, also, we've called it the delivery event. Uh, will happen on the 28th. So coming up, um, they'll have about 30 Model 3s by then. And then he gave a little bit, uh, a few clues here into um, how the production is going to go from there. So production grows exponentially. So August should be 100 cars and September above 1,500. And I'll show you why that matters here in a second. So this is awesome. Um, I had enough referrals. Thanks to you guys for helping spread the word about that uh, from the last program that they ran. And if you got seven, you will get an invite to the Model 3 delivery event, which is we know now is on the 28th. And I got eight. So, uh, well, first off, to the eight people that bought Teslas, welcome to the family. I hope you enjoy them, and I love to hear from you. Um, a few folks have sent me photos and stuff, so please do if you were one of the folks that used my referral code. Um, so, yeah, there's that, and I hope that you know I'm going to get the the invite, which I assume I will, and I will do as much as I can to share that experience with you guys. I'm sure there will be stuff on TV and you know much more high quality broadcast, but uh, I'll definitely take some photos. 
photos, maybe take some videos while I'm there. Any interesting things that that I find uh, specific to kind of you know our relationship here, the data side of it, the more technical aspects of the vehicle, not just the the shiny. Um, uh, flashy sexiness of it. So uh, that's that's second. So we know when the party is. I'm gonna go uh, and I'm gonna share that experience with you. So thank you for your support and getting me there. Um, and I can't wait to to you know go experience it and share it with you guys. So the next one, uh, the third tweet from Elon here, uh, pushing midnight, was that he thinks that they can reach twenty thousand Model Threes per month in December. So this is that 5,000 mark, right? So you need to be making, well, an average of, uh, of 5,000 cars per week to do this. Now, he's talking about it in December, and I had previously talked about it as late October, and they had even uh, thought early September. So this is all over the place. Uh, this is you know the most updated, most current uh, information that we have and and estimates. Now I don't know if Elon is spitballing, um, but it, it seems like he's not the kind of guy that would um, just throw things uh, uh, against the wall and see what sticks. He seems like somebody that that actually uh, thinks things through. Um, so I'm gonna go with uh, with you know this is a, 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 a as accurate as we can guess right now. Uh, so this morning after waking up on that. Uh, waking up to this and, and, and really digesting all of it, uh, I, I did what I do and I pulled that data down and I created a new delivery ramp. And so here you can see, um, and let me refresh the page here so you can get in there. Uh, you, here you can see the uh, my estimate for the Model 3 delivery r ramp and I've uh, called out a few points here and you, you may have seen this on the web. This is being shared all over right now. So I took, uh, the way this works, by the way, is uh, this is your typical S-curve that has exponential growth, um, and it's a logarithmic function. So there's actually some math that's going in, uh, into this. Um, and the way it works is, you know, it starts out very slow, and then it sort of hits this inflection point, and then it takes off, and then it hits a point where it sort of uh, tops out. And so I'm only going for 2017 here. Um, after this, essentially, you'd see a slow growth up until the point where if, they're able to, they would hit 10,000 per week, uh, which I'm still really, really uh, skeptical about with the Fremont factory being a place where they can do that. So uh, taking Elon's words for it, um, 30 delivered by July 30th. There you go at the very beginning. Uh, and you can see it's extremely slow from there. And then September, they're over 1,500. Um, by October 1st, the, they'll have about uh, almost 3,000 deliveries. That's including everything from July up until October 1st. Then the ramp really takes off. And then by November 19th, I'm estimating that things start to slow down a little bit. But by then, they've had 25,000 deliveries. And then at the end, you can see that they're at 54,000 uh, deliveries overall. So this is the S-curve in terms of number of cars that, that, that are being delivered by week. And then you can see th those points there are kind of the cumulative uh, totals. Um, uh, you know, this may not be that accurate, but the, the question is, um, or I, I guess the way this works, and uh, you'll see me question anybody that puts out an estimate there, I want to know what model you used, um, because I'm using the model that they say, uh, you know, is how this works. I'm not an automotive expert, I'm a data guy, so I'm following the model they say that um, this production ramp follows, and I'm plugging in essentially the numbers that they are providing, and then when you, when the way this works is I punch in those variables, and then uh, I, I run the calculation, and it comes up with this model for me. So I'm not just, um, you know, finger to the wind uh, spitballing here, this is legit. So if they're able to hit the numbers that they say, then this model will also be accurate assuming that um, that it follows that, that exact uh, th that exact log function it may not of course there's reality versus you know predictions uh, but essentially that's I just wanted to share that with you guys so when you see this this wasn't just me coming up with numbers um, which you see a lot of folks do this is something where I'm um, using the numbers that they've provided those are also estimates and assumptions, but if, if we assume that those are correct, then this model will also be correct. Uh, whether or not, you know, what the final number will be, I'm sure it'll be different than, than what I have here. Um, but anyways, I think that's, uh, that's a pretty good number for them. Um, this opens up a whole new host of questions uh, and stuff that I'm just not sure um, where to take it right now. So for example, I just did a video uh, I think a week or two ago about 
um, if you know my original estimate was eighty three thousand, and now we're looking at fifty four thousand. So uh, maybe that's why the stock is down nine points right now, almost three percent or two and a half percent on the day, uh, is because Wall Street and those guys realize, hey, this is significantly less um, cars are going to be delivered than what Tesla originally uh, originally estimated. So, um, you know, what this means for the U.S. EV market means it's going to be uh, significantly less uh, of an impact. Uh, what does it mean for Tesla? I think, uh, so, you know, specifically for you guys, uh, Model 3 reservation holders, uh, which I'm one of, uh, this means that I believe they're still going to hit the 200,000 mark, uh, 200,000th car sold in the U.S. Um, by, in this year, probably late Q4. Um, but you know, so, so what that means is then the federal, uh, tax credit here in the U S starts to phase out after that. Uh, and I've got a whole video explaining that if you, if you're unfamiliar, um, but you know, it, depending on how this goes, they may not hit it. And if they don't hit it until Q1 of next year, that would actually be a, a good sign. Um, so anyways, uh, this, take this, uh, you guys, uh, can find this. If you go to my Twitter account, I, I shared this, uh, you know, print it out, share it with other people, do whatever you like with it, uh, draw a big X on it, you know, um, in, in anything, anything you feel. Um, and you also, uh, I'll share, uh, well, actually <clears throat> no, how about that? If you guys want the, the raw data here, cause you can download the actual data. Um, just go ahead and email me, go to, uh, teslanomics.co and hit up the contact page. Um, shoot me a note and I can send you kind of how I actually came up with this estimate. By the way, you know, you can see right here as I go point by point, you can see that there's actual data behind this number. I didn't just, you know, draw like an S curve line. Okay. So that brings us up to the, the next, um, impact that this has had on my work and things that, you know, you guys have used and seen, uh, and that is, uh, that we have the model three delivery estimator and I've updated the model. Um, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to continue to refine this. So right now it's kind of in beta, uh, but uh, I'm I'm a big fan of kind of the the Reed uh, Hoffman w a way of, of releasing products. You know, if you're not embarrassed by your first release, then you're 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 releasing too late. So um, I went ahead and updated this model and using the new delivery ramp. So using that delivery ramp I just showed you, uh, I, I basically plugged those numbers in, and uh, there was actually several things I had to do to kind of reverse uh, engineer some of the calculations um, and then I updated this now if you're a very early reservation holder what I'm finding is that the delivery date isn't much different at all um, but if you're a bit later uh, it, it'll actually bump things up because of the way that ramp works and then if you and then if you're like in Japan or something uh, it may push it out you know several months the other way so because we're talking about an exponential curve and I'm shifting that essentially with this model over the previous one which has, was actually a linear model just a straight line then uh, we're going to see some some either like very minimal or to no shift to really dramatic shifts one way or the other. So I'm going to I'm going to keep monitoring this. I mean, uh, hundreds of people are using this every single day still. Look, we've almost got uh, 80 over 81,000 people have used this. So uh, this is still like, you know, I'm basically every time somebody uses it. I get to log what uh, options they chose um, and then see what the estimate would be. So I'm going to go through, now I already did some testing on, on the back end of this, um, but uh, I'm going to go through and just kind of update this model periodically. Uh, it's updated as of now uh, with these new numbers. So if you want a, a new estimate, uh, go there and check it out. Um, you can find this on my webpage, of course, teslanomics.co. And this is slash model three delivery estimator with dashes between those um, or you can just uh, click on the one of the latest episodes there and you'll see that uh, and then of course the way this works if you haven't used it yet uh, is you punch in your the date you reserved it so i i defaulted it to uh to when i reserved mine so you know vanity and all that um are you a current tesla owner yes which model do you want so you have the performance model or the dual uh motor and those play a factor in uh, and when you get it, because they said they're not going to deliver the dual motor or start making them until early next year, most likely. Um, so if you choose that, for example, you'll be months out. Then uh, you, you punch in your location. Uh, this goes to their delivery uh, rollout strategy and their uh, the shipping time. Um, so, you know, there's that. You click tell me when and Bob's your uncle. You get this, uh, 
you get this new page here, you get this annoying pop-up, I apologize for it, but hey, that's how this business works. Um, and you can see there essentially your estimate. Now, if you want, you also can click on this. Um, and from there, it'll give you the, the full screen view. This takes a second to download. And this is super high resolution, so you can print it out and uh, you know put it on your wall or whatever. I feel so embarrassed because when I print it out, um, when I print it out, uh, it's black and white. Um, I need to really get a nice high quality print of this. So anyways, this is just an estimate. Um, it's fun. If you guys haven't seen it, you know, uh, I thought it'd be something really fun to just to check out. Uh, and then there's the video of me explaining how it works down below. So uh, there's that. Uh, and now I figured let's jump over to, uh, to Q&A since really this is all the Tesla news that's going on in the, in the world today. Um, which is why I do the show live, by the way. You know, I know some some other YouTubers do these daily news shows, um, and they're fantastic. But uh, you know, they have a whole team editing stuff immediately when they're done. For me, you know, this I just figured we'll do it live. And as long as I can get the uh, the audio and the video and everything synced up, we should be good. Oh, by the way, next week I will not be uh, able to do a live broadcast. I will be out at Glacier National Park. Uh, hopefully uh, away from where I can successfully receive an internet signal. But I will still have a video for you guys, um, and I hope you enjoy it. it it's going to be a bit more fun than the deep dive analysis that I typically do. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's go through some questions here. 15 of them, wow. Okay, we'll see how far we get uh, before, people, uh, before uh, people sign off. So Jordan asks, uh, my 2013 60 kilowatt hour Model S with 34,000 miles is experiencing a higher than average degradation. Uh, that's how much it loses and basically how much it doesn't um, charge. With the full charge, it's rated to around 195 miles. Are you aware of a threshold that Tesla assumes as average degradation before warranty steps in? Uh, hey, Jordan, you know, I, I'm not sure of any um, specifically about the warranty and how that works. I do know that there is an infinite mile warranty, um, eight years on, on, on the battery, which yours is still in. I would contact them and find out. Um, you know, I, I am curious, um, some things that affect the range, in case you're unaware, are the temperature. Uh, so extremely hot climates and sometimes extremely cold climates can affect what that number is. Um, battery degradation data that I've seen suggests that the, the battery will last uh, upwards of 300,000 miles before you you lose about 20 percent. Um, so you know, yeah, this seems a, a bit uh, a bit high. Uh, my my 2013 Model S 60 kilowatt hour, which is only at about 24,000 miles, uh, only gets 200 on a full charge uh, as well. So you're only five miles off from me. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I would I would contact them and check it out. Um, I'm not sure of any specific warranty though. Susan Smith, uh, is sitting on a sled of batteries safe during lightning storms? Um, that's, I don't know. That's a great question. Um, I, I, please don't try that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I suppose, it, I suppose it, it depends on where you are, um, with, uh, w with your battery. Okay. Ryan Jackson. Hey Ben, w just curious. What do you think the plan is for the configurator? Do you think it will show all the options and prices for everything, but n say, not currently available or will it not show anything but color and wheels like elon said i think we'll have more than color and wheels i think we'll have um other software upgrades like a uh, ludicrous mode or in those kind of things but um i'm not really sure um if they're going to put things like all-wheel drive on there which aren't available so uh it is going to be curious how they're going to say how they're going to roll that out because what if you want all-wheel drive and it's not available and say they only give you a certain number of days to configure it um who knows uh but yeah thanks for the question ryan uh, Don K. Glass, since production has started with delivery of the first 30 Model 3s at the end of the month, what are the options available and what is the cost? Well, I believe that the first ones rolling off the line are going to be the bigger batteries, and they are not going to have um, many options, uh, wheels, color, uh, things like that, software upgrades, as I, as I just mentioned. Um, and uh, the cost I'm estimating will be probably around 40 something thousand, 45,000 maybe with just the, the bigger battery. Uh, and then later on, if you wanna add um, full self-driving capability and all that, you'll be close to 50,000. So that's my estimate on that. Um, Don asks again, do you anticipate re uh, releasing a tool that can be used to estimate when any individual can expect to get their Model 3? Hmm, 
Well, there you go. Uh, go to my website, teslanomics.co, and you can find it there. Um, if you go back, uh, let me find it. If you just go to the main page, um, and you go to when will I get my Tesla, find out exactly when now. You can find it embedded in the page right there. So yeah, go check that out. Um, it's also on Teslarati and a few other sites. So you can uh, go use that. Will asks, how do you think the Model 3 will impact the, the Model S in sales and reputation? Uh, that's a good good question. Um, you know, I, I think it'll, I think it may be a feeder program. People that uh, maybe don't like spending a lot of money on cars, uh, you know, but really like the idea of a Tesla, they get the Tesla and then it goes, it, it really kind of uh, wets their palate and, and now they want something uh, more. And then, you know, they end up buying a Model S later on uh, or in addition, they buy a Model S. So um, I don't think it'll negatively affect it. Uh, if anything, I think it'll bring new people in to this electric lifestyle that a lot of us have embraced. All right, so Mike asks, will, will this new info cause you to update the delivery estimator? Done. Yes, I did. Go check it out. Uh, Whitey Whiteman, why just 100 in August? I thought they produced, pre-produced 20 in December. Um, is not 5,000 cars a week in a given point in 2017. Any idea? I'm a little confused by your question. Um, why just 100 in August? I think it's because uh, my guess is that the uh, equipment at the Gigafactory hasn't fully been installed to automate the battery production line. And so that's your bottleneck right now. Uh, that's my guess. Um, and so until that happens, which I'm guessing will be late September, you won't see an, a, a severe uptick in that because you know people are just slow compared to robots. Uh, okay, so Paul asks, Paul Chrysal, Chrysal, do you think your Model 3 estimator could be uh, a quite a bit out? My date from that is uh, February 14th of 2019, but I do live in the UK and I'm hoping for late 2018. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, it, it depends. You know, obviously the estimator is just a fun tool um, to play around with, and living in the UK and stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot of other like they have to make it right-hand drive, for example. So who knows if and when they're going to do that? Um, so yeah, I mean, it could it could be wrong. Uh, or I mean, certainly won't be 100% right, but um, hopefully it's in the ballpark. Oliver from Newcastle, UK. Newcastle, UK. Uh, Elon has previously mentioned that the dual motors will be coming months after initial launch, mainly for simplicity and to allow scaling up of manufacturing. Do you think that by the time they start fulfilling UK orders that the dual motors will be available or will the same thing happen and UK reservation holders who want dual motors will have to wait? Uh, I think it's a fair estimate that uh, they'll be making the dual motor options by the time they're going to the UK. Um, yeah, I, I think so. Um, so yeah, hopefully it doesn't delay folks over there that, that want them. Jeff Price, what color did you order for your Model 3? Well, I haven't ordered my Model 3, but I'm likely going to get white. Um, I just love white cars with the black rims. It's just, uh, you know, really bright colors and or just kind of like like really like uh, elegant is, is the way I, I, I like to consider it. Um, and, and they're easy to keep clean, by the way. I don't, I don't people argue with me on that, but uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. James asks, when will the federal tax credit phase out start? Based on the Wikipedia numbers, 154,000 through Q1. It looks like end of Q3, but I assume they will delay delivery, push to Q4. Yeah, I think it'll be Q4 of this year um, is when it will start. And then for that, the rest remainder of that quarter and the following quarter, the full credit um, to, it, it exists, then it's 50% for the next two quarters, then it's 25% for the next two quarters, and then it's completely gone. Um, so yeah, I, my, my I'm still I'm still firm on my estimate um, of that, and you can check out my other video uh, where I did a whole you know breakdown of it. Uh, Jason asks, I'm a UK reservation holder. I understand I won't get my Model 3 until 2019, probably. How long can you wait to actually configure the car? And when you're ready, when you're already waiting so long, would it even have any effect on delivery time? That's a good question. Um, the way I understand they're going to roll these out is as it's time for you to order yours, um, that's when you'll it'll be open for you to configure it. And that's also when you're essentially committed um, to buying the car. Right now, your your uh, reservation is refundable, so uh, you know you can take it back. But at that point in time, um, it, it won't be. So uh, my my guess is that when you get the when when they open it up to you is when you can actually uh, configure it, and that's when they're actually going to start building it. So it shouldn't be long after that. Jason asks. Uh, what happens if I submit my configured Model Three now and then find out a delivery I'm not accepted for I'm not accepted for finance? Um, 
you find out at delivery I'm not accepted for finance. Uh, I think you would have to figure all that out in advance. Um, and the way what I would recommend, and so let me pause disclaimer: I'm not a financial advisor. Do not um, do not take my words as financial advice or act on them or anything like that. But let me say what I would do or what I plan on doing um, is to get my own financing from my bank. Uh, who I have a good relationship with and can get a decent rate uh, on an auto loan. And then I will just take that. In fact, this is what I did with my current one. I just go to Tesla and then hand them a check um, for the whole car. So Tesla isn't involved in the financing aspect uh, for me. Um, and that's that's what I would do. So, so And that would help you avoid that problem too. Okay. Uh, Jason asks again, um, is Tesla finance secured against a car and therefore easier to get as the bank has a secured asset? I actually don't know about Tesla financing. Um, I thought they just partnered with other banks, so I'm not quite sure. Um, it would make sense for them to offer financing as well as things like insurance. Um, okay, so thanks for the questions in advance, everyone. Again, if you wanted to uh, to, to get on um, that list, go to teslanomics.co and you can sign up there. Um, now I'm going to switch over. I've got my laptop here. I'm going to fire this bad boy up and, um, well, it's already fired up, but, uh, I'm going to go take a look at your questions and see what we got. We've got uh, a fair amount of time. Um, and so the way, the way it works is I just kind of scan through these, find ones that are interesting. Uh, and if you have one that you really want to send out, you click the dollar sign down there and you can uh, drop a couple bucks and make sure that your comment pops up. Everyone sees it. We've got almost you know, over 600 people watching right now. Um, and then I will for sure uh, get to your question. Um, otherwise, I may not be able to cover it. So um, go for the questions. Let's see what they got. I'm going to scroll up and see um, if I have any. Uh, Kareem asks, do you know anything about color options? Uh, yeah, there's been, uh, I think, five different color options that we've seen in the wild. Uh, you can, oh man, what are they? I'm sure they're on Teslarati. There's the, the white, the blue, the red, the signature red. Um, I don't think we've seen matte black. Um, maybe we have, uh, but uh, that's one that's kind of interesting. I don't think I'd want a matte black car just because it seems like a lot to take care of. But um, yeah, yeah, so I think there's about five different colors uh, that will be available uh, from the start. Uh, which, by the way, um, when I visited the Tesla, the, the Fremont factory, the whole paint shop thing is is bananas. It's it's ridiculous. They um, uh, <laughs> like if you work in the paint shop, you have to use Tesla soap uh, and wear Tesla clothes and wash them in specific detergent because apparently uh, the paint is so sensitive that just like one little chemical can totally ruin the paint job of the car or the entire batch of cars that are being painted. Um, and then you have to take it all the way back um, uh, to, to kind of, uh, the original, um, the original thing. So anyways, um, I'm going to go take a look here. What else do we have? Black and white are not colors. We're getting very, uh, very meta. Uh, what is shipping time to the EU? Oh man, it'd be, um, it'd, it'd be a while from now. <laughs> Uh, I, I think uh, uh, at least 2019, um, most likely, before we see a car out there. Hey, Ben, what do you think about the Model 3 and drifting with the rear-wheel drive option? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a car guy, and so I'm not really... Uh, I, I'm, I mean, I love Tesla, uh, but uh, in general, I think cars are pretty much crap, especially when it comes to the technology. So uh, I, I can't really say. Uh, it, it would be curious, though. I think it might be hard because... The, not, forget the rear-wheel drive. It's just so dang heavy. So yeah, I don't know. Um, do you think the Model 3 will make Tesla profitable? Well, let's talk about this for a second. So uh, profitability if for a company like Tesla, I, I would contend is a bad thing. Um, and the reason I say that is because it means that you're not pushing. So if you are really kind of pushing the pedal to the metal here and trying to grow your company, and, and don't forget that Tesla is a tiny a uh, tiny auto manufacturer compared to the other big ones. Um, my AC turns on. Live broadcast. Uh, so them being so small and still being very vulnerable, I feel, uh, ba you know, compared to the other ones, uh, I, I don't think profitability is something that, that, that really should be the goal right now. I think growth is the goal. And, and that's essentially why they're not profitable. Um, if they wanted to, they could, you know, essentially cut the engines and see how long they can coast and, and make profits. But 
uh, as an investor, I would be really upset um, uh, about that. Now, I will say that that their uh, their losses, you know, the the earnings per share loss hasn't uh, ha has been pretty discouraging um, to see. But I think the Model 3 is going to turn things around uh, significantly for them in, in, in their, their overall growth and size. Um, and then, but still, you know, they, they need to put out the Semi, then the Model Y, uh, and they need to get a new factory in China and at least one or two new factories in North America, uh, potentially one in the EU. So th th there is the amount of growth that Tesla needs to achieve before they can uh, effectively kind of just sit back and rest, I think is years and years out. So profitability is not something that um, I, I would say is, is the goal or should be the focus at all for them. Um, and I would be worried. So there you go. Uh, what's the minimum sum you need to become a Tesla investor? Uh, I don't know, $352 maybe? It looks like the current share price. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, uh, I'm late, but can you tell me about the Tesla network? Yeah, so, uh, well, the Tesla network, the idea is you could push a button and have your car go out and uh, and go make you money, like a self-driving lift or something like that, um, and then come back. Now, I think we're, we're still at least a few years out from that because the cars, it's, I don't believe, legal to be fully self-driving yet. Um, and then uh, this whole thing, you know, it, it'll be really quickly, uh, rolled out though, I think once they're able to actually have self-driving cars all doing the thing. Um, I think at that point, um, it'll just be a flip of a switch uh, because essentially the Uber aspect of it, building an app that lets people do this is pretty straightforward. Uh, but really the hard part is making the car. So uh, once they get that handled, I think it'll be the flip of a switch. But I, I really doubt that a lot of people are going to be doing it. So, so I don't know. What's the hit on battery range going from aluminum to steel? Uh, well, the car is going to be heavier with that, right? But what's the specific hit? Um, I'm not sure it matters. Uh, recently, we saw photos from the interior, and it looks like the Model 3 will go over 300 miles, uh, close to 312 miles on a full charge. So does it really matter? <laughs> uh, to me, it doesn't. Um, I'm going to be thrilled with that range uh, once I get my Model 3. So yeah, yeah. Have you pre-ordered a Tesla 3? Yes, I have. Uh, I have two reservations, actually. Um, and being a current Tesla owner and re uh, making reservations on the first day, I hope to get them sometime in October or maybe November. So hopefully soon. And of course, I'll share all that with you guys. Uh, I'm not really a good vlogger. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when I do these things, I'm, I'm not great at vlogging, but I'll try to do as much in-depth stuff about my Model 3 um, as I can uh, once I get it. So there you go. Bust out a rap, cuz man, I I I, <laughs> I wish I could. Uh, back in the day, back in the day, I, I may have taken you up on that. Uh, question from James: uh, Estimator takes into account Tesla, SpaceX employees, and Model S owners. Yes, it does. Uh, th those uh, there's some ratios and percentages that are applied, and essentially, um, if you're not one, then you know you're you're pushed behind um, all the folks there. So. Uh, what do you think about the spaceship feeling in the Model 3? Well, uh, I, I, I think it's a misnomer. I think spaceships are uh, much different, but uh, I get the sentiment. Um, I'm excited about it. Uh, you know, seeing one up close as I did when I was at the Fremont factory was, was I, I thought it was a gorgeous car. I couldn't really tell too much from the interior. Um, but really I'm more into the tech side anyways. Uh, you know, so the, uh, in fact, uh, people give me, give me shit for that in other videos where I compare Tesla's to really high end luxury cars, but you know, whatever in, in, in any event, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think it'd be nice, uh, or I, I can't wait. So, uh, Ollie asks, do you think the configurator will be open for all reservation holders come end of July? No, I don't think so. I think it'll be available to those that are, when it's your turn, um, you get invited to it. And I think that's a good rollout strategy because it will allow them to, um, to essentially, uh, uh, you know, tweak it as it goes out. So, you know, a few people will get it and they'll maybe get feedback about it and then maybe add a new feature, et cetera. Um, so, so, you know, there you go. Like for example, if you're in Japan or the UK or somewhere else, yeah, you're not going to get invited to configure it for quite a while. I, I, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, with the minimalistic dash, where will they put the turn signal lights? Uh, in the center console? I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't think they're, they're gonna, you know, that's, that's a big deal. <laughs> 
Simplicity equals good. I agree. I cannot agree more. In fact, that was the whole point of the uh, estimator tool was that it was a, a, a thing for you to use that was simplified because, um, and, and I did put a link to the much more uh, detailed version um, from Troy from Tesla Motors Club, um, who I worked with to come up with the, the new one there uh, before now I've completely you know shifted away from that logic and have, and have kind of developed my own logic for it. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, I, I thought, you know, he did a fantastic job, um, but nobody would, would want to use that because it's just so damn complex. And I like it, uh, but the, you know, in general, people won't. Like, for example, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Android, um, but I understand that it's too, way too complex for a lot of folks. And, you know, if you're non-technical, you just want something that works. So, you know, there's that example, right? It's the same kind of thing. Some the, the, the folks that want the more complicated tools and things uh, will appreciate them, uh, but in general, the mass market uh, is not going to want that. So simplicity is going to be fantastic, and I think Tesla's doing a great job uh, with their designs um, and, and w with other things. I, I, I will say this, and, and uh, you know, I didn't get to ask Franz when I saw him at the, the Q&A, but um, the UI for the, the interior part of the screen is, is very 90s looking to me. Um, and I apologize if any of the designers are, are, are watching here, but if you look, uh, just simply the icons and some of these other things are very like 3D and kind of word art looking. Um, whereas hopefully the Model 3, all those pictures we've seen so far are much cleaner and much more modern. So I really hope we have a, a major UI update because it is, it is weird, and I, now I know the Model S was designed nine years ago, uh, but the software inside continues to get better. So hopefully we'll see some updates uh, on that front because um, right now it's like, oh, there's this beautiful car, super high tech. You get in and it's like, what is this 90s web page looking thing? Uh, at least, you know, I, I, I work um, in tech, so maybe that's that's my, you know, very niche bias perspective, but, uh, but you know, I'm sure they're going to do good. Um, are you scared of the first batch having defects? Uh, not really. Um, you know, uh, this is a simpler car to make. I don't think it's going to be nearly as hard as say like the model X, uh, which, you know, even now I, I see people, other YouTubers talking about this. So yeah, yeah, there's that. Should Tesla add solar panels or other way of energy production? So you don't have to charge the car. Yes, I would love that. It just, it, doesn't work. <laughs> In fact, uh, Panasonic has some things. I think a new Prius or something is being rumored to have it. Um, I, I want if you. I don't know if you guys how long you've been into the the this text the the green tech stuff. But years ago there was uh, uh, something that was a solar paint, and so you could literally paint something with solar and it would generate electricity and i think that is a fantastic idea if you could somehow maybe not a paint but just wrap the car in it um to where it looks like a normal paint job and that whole thing generates power um even if it wasn't tremendous it'd be great for it to uh to, to work you know um at at, at a, a level that would overnight charge or something like that um and i have seen some really cool there's a youtuber out there named dylan mcgaster uh who makes these awesome short films about documentary type style about these people that are living out of their vans and one guy had this really old VW van, converted it to an electric vehicle, actually using lead acid batteries, uh, and then put solar panels that pop up on top of it. And I think they said over about three days, the thing, it only goes like like 40 or something miles on a charge, but over over a few days, it'll, it'll charge the batteries fully. Um, I would love to have something like that in the future. In fact, I have this, this weird, crazy vision. So go with me on, on this for a second. We buy a Tesla Semi. Right, like we all go in on it, or, or you know, a few of us go in on it, whatever. Uh, hoping it's autonomous, that'd be even uh, icing on the cake. Uh, we, you know, and it, it pulls a trailer, and the bottom of the trailer we just line with batteries, just just Tesla car batteries, basically the whole thing. So we could have like 50 of them. I don't know how many will fit on there, but a ton of them, right? Then on top of that, you put, of course, with you know, good structure and all that, a shipping container. Inside of the shipping container, you build a house. So it's like one of these tiny homes, these uh, shipping container homes. Now on top of that, you have uh, an entire thing of solar panels and that much space, you'd be able to get a lot of solar panels. And with that, you go and you drive forever. Uh, you park it for maybe a week or so. You you know check out a spot uh, wherever you're at and then, uh, and then you're fully charged and ready to go. You can literally drive forever and see the world. I think that would be 
uh, a brilliant uh, thing. I don't know if it would be feasible for like me to own one of those, but uh, maybe a company could do this and charge you know a, a lot of money for it. I think I think the the semi uh, is such an interesting platform for making. Um, more than just a car. So I cannot wait um, to see. I don't know how we got on that topic, but thanks for the question. Um, if I wanted a Model 3 by mid-2019, should I reserve now or wait for some certified pre-owned? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think you're going to get any certified pre-owned uh, Model 3s by, by mid-2019. I mean, maybe you will. Um, but re remember, the reason that there are any certified pre-owned uh, Model Ss or Xs mostly was because uh, they came out with autopilot. And when you did autopilot, uh, all of a sudden, everybody that didn't have it wanted autopilot. So they went up and they, they re-upped and bought new ones. Um, and there's even a story I heard about uh, people here at, in San Diego where uh, you know the biggest battery was a 90. So the guy got the P90D, everything loaded up, and then you know six months later, they came out with the 100. And so he traded that one in and bought a P100D. So uh, the question is, what would be the motivation for somebody to drop their Model 3 uh, that early? Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. Now, there might be a few, but depending on where you live, uh, you may be waiting much longer than that. That's my, my guess, my thoughts on it. Uh, Jeff asks, do you have any referral codes left? Uh, I do not. Um, so I guess thank you for helping spread the word. I know I'm not allowed to technically share my code or advertise it here, uh, but those of you that uh, are on my email list or have sent me a note, uh, you know, uh, I've completely maxed out all of the referral codes uh, for this program and for, for the remainder of the year, in theory. Um, we'll see. I'm actually going to check right now just to see. Every now and then I have a cancellation. Um, so let me check. Nope, there we go. We've got... Um, Three out of five have been delivered, so there's two, but they've been ordered, and yeah, we'll see. Um, one thing that's really cool about the app, and I'm gonna, oh man, I, I can't show it to you, but uh, in the app, if you're a Tesla owner, it tells you uh, CO2 saved through referrals. Um, so far, we're at uh, 1,681 pounds, so that's kind of cool. Um, I'm actually working with Teslab. Uh, these guys have an app uh, with a Z T E Z L A B. Uh, and uh, it connects to your car to help give you stats in your car and kind of like a little social network for Tesla owners. And in, and what I'm, I'm coming up with a, a metric that I want to I want to um, work with them on to to figure out like what health impact are Teslas having on the communities where people have them? Um, are they you know because we know that a certain number of people die from air pollution uh, and. and we know that you know that is caused by by cars and other things. So if we think about what impact is is a car having, you could you could get your you know do some math and get to the point where you can see that it's actually um, saving people's lives uh, to to some extent. Now I know it's kind of a stretch, but uh, it, it'll be a fun metric to track and kind of think about like the the Tesla health index or something like that. So let me know what you guys think about that um, after this video post uh, in a, in the comments and everything. Okay, let me go for maybe two more questions here. And uh, wow, holy cow, we've got uh, over 700 people watching. I think that's a record for us. Um, do you own Tesla stock? Yes, uh, but like two shares or something. Um, not not a significant amount. Uh, will, the, will Tesla take a referral code for Model 3 or only the S and X? Only the S and the X. Um, but who knows, maybe it'll be uh, you know in the future. Um, does it convert that to Cal farts? That's a good question. Uh, I wonder. Uh, send me send me the formula. Uh, let me see. Turn the lights on to activate the solar panels at night. Um, well, I'm not sure what activating the solar panels at night would do for you, but you would need some batteries to store it, which would already be there. So, <laughs> Patrick Maloney, I'm waiting for the semi. Man, if you get one, I can't. Like, so I should be getting an invite to that event as well. I don't even know what to make of this. Uh, it just blows my mind that they're making a semi. Um, and like. I'm a fan of Tesla, uh, but I'm not that much of a fan where I'm totally blinded by it, right? I don't have that, that bias that just completely blinds me. So uh, I'm curious about this more than I am really like excited uh, and thinking it's a good idea. So, hey, shout out to San Diego. Any possibility of the Tesla wall charger not working for the Model 3? Uh, I doubt it. You've seen uh, the Model 3 being charged at superchargers all over the place. So uh, I assume it has a standard connector there. Um, if not, I'm sure they would they would offer a, 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 an adapter or something. So, okay, last question. What do we got? Whoops. 
<laughs> cow farts are irrelevant. I love that. That's what we. That's what we should have. How many? How how many fewer cow farts uh, are are being emitted based on on Teslas? Oh man. <laughs> Uh, how much money have you earned from Tesla stocks? Not much. I I'm, I'm, don't even have a clue. President Musk. Oh, man. I don't think that's possible. Uh, okay. Last question here from Andre uh, London. Any thoughts about the special something for, uh, for day one reservations? Uh, yeah. So uh, I have some ideas. Um, I think that you're going to probably get a, a specific color option or a specific like a free all glass roof maybe um or what would be even easier for them is just a software upgrade um I, i've contended uh especially with the, the referral program also that uh, they should consider doing things like that right instead of having the referral program be things like a power wall or whatever else just offer things that you could literally click a button for and doesn't cost you really anything else um, so yeah, yeah, there's that. Um, and I do have a, a one final question here before I go, uh, because I'm planning out the next month or so of content. I want to know, um, are you guys interested in any kind of bold predictions? Uh, you know, I, I always base things in data. And as you saw, uh, you know, I have a, a, an actual algorithm that I use to come up with these things. This isn't just like, you know, spitballing, you know, bullshit. This is, I, I really try to base things in fact, but I have some some other fun ideas that I want to throw out there, but I'm I don't want to I'm afraid to put them in a video uh, because I I know you guys will just like you know it, you'll you'll be really uh, upset about it. But I wanted to I wanted to ask, would you guys be interested in like a series of videos called Bold Predictions? And I just throw out crazy crazy ideas and and things that are like technically possible or feasible from Tesla, but we just basically have zero actual info that, that it's a thing. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, it just if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff. So uh, if you are, leave me a comment down below, or if not um, as well, this video will be live here uh, or available on YouTube uh, in a few moments. It just takes a little while for it to process. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything, feel free to leave them in comments on this video after it posts, or you can hit me up at teslanomics.co. And I thank you guys yet again for joining me, and uh, I will see you back.